Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful back in the studio today with a fun new thing to share with you. I've had some technical difficulties with my computer and printer over the last week that's been kind of putting me in fits. So the other day I needed a break from all the computer stuff. So I watched a video from Mix It Up Marcy. And if you have not followed her, you need to do that if you like making papers. I uh, watched her, a video that she did this, this week and it was coffee staining paper and I'm not going to do the whole demonstration because she's the expert but I will share her video. I hope you'll go watch it. I will put the link down below and then I'm going to share with you today though my experiment and I'll share what I did maybe just a little different in addition to hers and I'm going to do some more experiments but I loved how my papers turned out so much that I ended up scanning them all in, got my printer figured out and um, scan them all and have a listing in my Etsy shop that I wanna share with you today. So I'm gonna show you my original papers first and then I'll go through kind of my Etsy listing and let you see what they look like printed out after I've scanned them. Marcy used a cookie tray, so you just need a cookie sheet and some baking paper in it. And then she used um, instant coffee and I just have these little packets that I had in the drawer. I'm using instant coffee. And then the, what I added is instant tea, matcha tea. So it's kind of a green, a greenish color. Now these have been sitting here for a couple of days, but um, you can kind of still see that greenish color in that. So I use that in addition to my uh, instant coffee and you can make it a stronger as you want, you know, it'll be darker if it's stronger kind of thing. I've just diluted it with water, obviously. And then she used um, an e a black ink. I don't know what kind she used, but I had this Liquitex um, Professional Acrylic Ink in Carbon Black, so I used that. And I diluted some in water like she did. And then I also used some straight from the dropper that you'll see. And then she mentioned that she had used some kind of spice um, used, she's in Spain and she used some kind of spice that they use. I don't think she mentioned what it was, but it was a yellow color. So I used turmeric. I had some of that and it's just a really pretty vibrant yellow color. And then the thing that I added was I had some saffron threads that are old and so outdated. And so I used some of those. Those are really expensive, but I just happen to have them and they're, they're past their date. So I don't know that I'll cook with them. But the nice thing about them is once I've, my papers are dry, I can just reuse these again. So I'm saving those since they're like gold. And then the other thing she used was lemon juice. And I can't remember now if she diluted it or not. I kind of think she did. I didn't have any lemons or lemon juice, but I did have this little thing of lime juice. I used it and I actually really liked that it was in this container because it made it really go on in nice drop droplets. You can put any of these probably in a spray bottle too and use, but... Um, I did have a spray bottle of water um, that actually has a little bit of tea in it still that I used just to spritz when I needed to. And then she used a combination of different coarseness of salt. And I just used this coarse kosher salt that I had. So you'll watch her video. She used, um, you know, the coffee, the ink, uh, some kind of yellow spice, uh, lemon, and, and salt. So I just added a couple of extra things. So... I ended up also stacking 21 papers into my tray, which was probably way too many. As I was doing them early on, I was so excited about some of the designs that I was just couldn't wait to see what they turned out. I ended up stacking so many paper and you keep introducing liquid that I know it washed a lot of that away. So I think I'm gonna try it again, doing fewer pages in the tray at a time and taking them out before they get too messed up and put them out to dry so that I can kind of save some of the design. And you'll see on some of them, they're more plain, which is actually really good for journaling because you can they'll be writable space. They'll be clear writable space. And then some are be great for backgrounds. This is one of my absolute favorite ones. I just love what the salt and the acid in the lemon does to kind of a resist, separates out the ink and things. So you'll watch her video how, how to do this, um, but they're all double-sided then. So, I mean, I can just fold these in half and have a journal. I'm so excited, you, you have no idea. I can't wait to get to making things. So I'm just gonna kind of go through and show you, you know, I don't know on camera, how well these are gonna, there's a lot of color in here even though it's very light and subtle and you see kind of the water drippy marks and, and, and things, but they're just beautifully grungy 
which you know I love. Um, and they're just, you never know what you're gonna get. I just, I, I get so excited about these kind of things because you just you never know. These drips actually happened as I was taking them out to let them dry. I dripped from one to another one and got some extra stuff, extra. And that's what these are too, just some extra drips that happened after the fact. But you can kind of see the different colors. Um, you know, there's lighter color, darker color, that little black gray color from the ink. This is another one of my favorites. But I just, I just love, I love that you never know what you're going to get. And they're all unique. I mean, this ends up with 42 unique designs. And even to like cut these out as circles, punch them out and use them as a design on something. I just, I just think they're great. I can't wait to get to start making things with them. So I will, um, at some point, I'm going to make some projects using these papers and hopefully soon. And then... Um, I'll do a video and then I'll link how, how this was done so that if you want to make your own papers. But you can buy these in my Etsy shop. I mean, 42 papers and you just can use them over and over again. And um, doing them as backgrounds if you do digital collage and that kind of thing too. I already have some ideas. Oh, I love this side. I already have some ideas of um, different ways I want to cut these up and collage with them. So that'll have to be another video. But I just, I was so excited to get this listed that I wanted to be able to include this video also in the listing so people can kind of see them up close. Since you can only put so many pictures on Etsy, um, and I'll show you kind of how I did that so you can really, you'll be able to see each one, but not as large as you'd like. So this is with the saffron threads, and it's just that beautiful, deep, deep, bright color. And I just... Oh, and I love how this one kind of turned out just from the, um, probably against, this might have been the one on the very bottom. And so it had the wrinkling of the baking paper was down first. And then, you, you know, you put this down and wet it so that it sticks. And I think that's just from the wrinkles from that baking paper, which I love. When she did hers, when she let them dry, she did things like put saran wrap too to get some wrinkles in her paper as they dried. And um, I didn't do that part on mine. I just got a little excited to get them dry and didn't want to add any more um, to them. But I have so many ideas now just from doing this that I want to um, do some more different papers. And that one came out just kind of a nice darker color. I really like the variety of color, it, you know, just within this one batch because of all the different things that I used and how they were layered on top of each other. This one, I had the idea to try to, to paint my different colors in stripes and then drop some ink on the bottom just to see if I could get kind of a landscapey kind of look um, out of something. Sorry about that. I have had a week of technical difficulty, so hopefully I'm back on track here. I left off here, I think. Um, I'm still flipping through. I like how this one turned out. It has, I think it was the one on the top, and so I didn't completely put liquid on it, so all these white parts were just the back of the paper. And I should mention the paper that I used was just plain old 28 pound copy paper, cheap stuff. Um, this is where I've dropped um, large blobs from the dropper of the ink. And then the other things kind of just watch it kind of separate out. So, um, so much fun. I really hope that you try to do this. This kind of looks like mildewy walls, old plaster walls. So I've made my 21 papers. I let them dry. Um, she put hers outside. I uh, live in the mountains, like I've mentioned before, it's freezing out there, so there's no way. And she said hers, it was cold in Madrid and she had to dry them overnight, um, kind of in a back patio area. I don't have that here. They would have been all over the forest. So I do have um, a greenhouse attached to the house that's got a brick floor and it's heated. So I don't keep it really warm, it's just for the plants. But um, I just laid some plastic down on that and laid them out and they actually dried just within a few hours just from the warmth in the floor. So I was so excited, they were dried, I, I would say two, three hours maybe. So I've got that, then I ironed them, you kind of clean off with a paper towel, any kind of extra you know, granules of coffee or whatever, you just wipe them down. 
Um, she sanded some of hers where if you put too much instant coffee in that's not dissolved, it'll get shiny and kind of sit on top. So she kind of sanded. I didn't have that on any of mine just because my coffee was so diluted. But you do that and then just iron them. So I just... I just love how they turned out. They they feel heavier weight paper now than they did. I guess adding the liquid and stuff and then letting them dry, they kind of shrink up a little bit. But I, I just, I love how they turned out. So my, my Etsy shop, then I of course wanted to print some out. So I'm gonna show you quickly what I printed. This is my original and I wanted to show that I, let's see where those are. The first thing I did was I forgot to put the right setting on my printer. And I, I printed all of these out just on cheap copy paper again, just on a normal setting. I didn't even do a high quality setting because I wanted to show you like the worst quality that I printed and then how you can even make them better quality depending on what you want to do. They were all scanned at 300 DPI and they're all as JPEG, so they print out really nice. This one, I didn't adjust my setting. I work with an Apple uh, computer, a MacBook Pro, and when you pull up a picture or anything to print, it comes up in preview. I always, except for this time, I forgot, check the scale. If it's not filling up your whole screen, you look down, it might be only uh, scaling it to 90 something percent. So you want to make sure that you click on fill entire page. And even then, you'll get a white border. Uh, you may have a printer that will print borderless. Mine does. I just haven't figured it out because it's new to print borderless. And then you'll go all the way to the edge. Most most of you know our cheap printers and stuff don't do that. So you just trim that little bit of white off. So make sure you tell it to print the whole thing. And then again, I just printed a few just to show you um, my how they print it out. And you can print them out um, double-sided or single-sided. Double-sided is great because then you can just fold them, you know, cut them to the size you want your journal to be. And you have, you know, with, with 21 different ones, you would have 42, you know, plus you're folding them in half. So double that, you'll have, you know, 84 pages. That's a great journal size, I think. So these were all, you know, just printed just from... You know how they came out. Oh, this one is the one I wanted to show you. So those were all just printed as they were. The other thing that you can do in preview is adjust the color. And you can do this if you have Photoshop or whatever um, computer, you know, that you use has some kind of software application that you can adjust color. So what I did is when I scanned my original, this was my original, and you can see it's very coffee stained, sepia looking. When I scanned it, it scanned to like this black and white, which to me is kind of a big difference, but I loved this, you know, even though it was black and white, I guess it goes this way. Even though it was more black and white, I just really liked it. So I've printed it out, it came out, you know, really black, white, gray with a little bit of, you know, kind of beige in it. And then I thought, okay, well, if I adjust the color, um, I just went into my preview and if up in tools, it'll say, um, Adjust color and adjust size are two of the options. There's more, but those two are two of the options. Adjust color, and then I just used the little sepia slider. You can adjust, you know, saturation and warmth and contrast, all that kind of stuff too, um, to get it a different look. But I just did the sepia one just to kind of show you the difference. So you can play around with that. And then your 42 unique designs just became even more because you can adjust the color on them a little bit. So um, I, I just wanted to show that if you've not tried that. And then uh, the other two things I printed on are, um, you know me, I like to print on vellum. My, my plan when I saw Marcy's video and saw the grungy papers was that I needed to get back to my uh, Bodhi volume two. Uh, if you've been following me along, I, several months ago I finished this, but my original project uh, was going to be much larger. Uh, I did this vintage grunge journal based on a ghost town called Bodie, and I ended up having it so thick that I, I only did about half my ideas. So I'm going to do a volume two, and I thought, you know, it'd be fun to make some more grungy papers uh, for that second volume. So that's what I'm going to use these for. So I went ahead and printed out. I, I had printed a lot on vellum there. So I wanted to print out on vellum to see it. And I kind of thought this looked like broken glass or, you know, broken window anyway. 
So I've printed it out. It printed out beautifully um, on the vellum. And the vellum that I used uh, is this one. I just got a new, I, I ran out. So I just did, this is for inkjet. And so I really, I didn't attach this to anything. In my my previous printer, which was also an Epson, I sometimes, and it may have been the brand of vellum I was using, I don't know, I sometimes had to tape it to a regular piece of paper because it wouldn't feed through. This one, I had no problem. I fed it through the back feeder. Um, it is for inkjet. I didn't have to tape it to anything. It just I just stuck it in there on its own, and it, and it printed great. So I, I will put a link down below to this because I just got it Strathmore. So I'll put that. And then the other thing that I like to print on is fabric. And I've shown in video how I do that but I will show I'll kind of go over it real quick with you also and I had already peeled this one off so I can actually use this again for another piece of fabric so I use for printing on fabric this from online labels I'll put the link to this also because it came like a hundred sheets and the reason I liked this one is the backing is all in one piece I was using this also for stickers and for certain things like that, you don't want the kind of, pay, of backing that is in stripes or sections like some of them are. Avery, I think, is that way. So I had to find one that had one solid uh, backing on it. So that's I'll put a link to that also. And then for the, the fabric, I just used a regular, just a thin cotton fabric. You can use anything that you want to print on. And this one wasn't bright white, but, you know, that's fine. And then you just take one of your labels and peel the backing off. And then you're gonna just lay it onto your fabric. I ironed my fabric first. You just lay it onto the fabric, and then you're gonna go and follow from the back the the size of your paper and just trim all the edge off. This is hanging out because I'd already pulled it off, but you just wanna trim all the way around so that it's eight and a half by 11 all stuck down. And then you wanna you know, get rid of any of these. You don't want anything that's gonna stick in your printer and get caught. So you, know, you would cut that off. And then you just run it through your printer again. I just used the back, um, the back feeder for this. When I printed before with my other Epson, I actually just stuck it in the bottom tray, you know, with paper and, and ran it through. But this one is really easy. Uh, the printer I have now to just pop it in the back, so I do that. And then you just peel it off, and now you have um, this beautiful piece of fabric. I can reuse this for usually um, maybe two or three is sticky enough to do two or three uh, reusing the same paper, and then you have this, you know, beautiful piece of printed fabric. And I didn't do this on any special setting. This was just normal. I didn't adjust the color or anything. And I this will be great to use with my, you know, recycled um, packaging that I like to cover and make um, journal covers. So I just, I think that would be a lot of fun too. So now my Etsy shop, I wanted to show you, um, this is the, the picture you'll see for the listing. And I, I printed it on two different things and I wanted to show you the difference of that too, just for quality. So when you when you go on to the shop, you'll see this is the first um, picture. And this shows all 42, just a sliver of each one. So that's what all of these are, the 42 um, individual designs that I have. And then um, they were all uh, done in 300 DPI. They're all JPEGs, eight and a half by 11, okay? And then the next pictures, you'll see there's three of them where I'm showing the full sheet, the full design. So even though they're small, you know, they're gonna be about that big, um, you'll be able to at least kind of see all of the designs. And then the next pages, I think I had room for like six more pictures or something. I did picked out some of my favorite ones and did the whole eight and a half by 11 so that you can see the quality of the designs. So that's kind of what you'll see in the pictures in my Etsy shop. Now I, I printed this out so I could show you and I first I printed it out on cheap copy paper, just plain paper, um, just so you can see you know the quality of it. So depending on what you're gonna use it for, uh, you may just want it to be on cheap paper. Uh, it, or like a mid-range, like the Hammer Mill 32-pound um, paper is one that I like. I like the weight of it, too. Um, this paper that I used is even heavier, and I'll show you the difference. So if you can see, let me see if I can get my lighting right here. You can kind of see um, in this banner, you can kind of see these black lines, okay? So that is just printed on cheap paper on your normal thing. Now that's a banner, that's not gonna be something you print anyway, you're printing these. So this is just kind of gives you an idea 
um, you know, on cheap paper. This one I wanted to show to compare. This is a new paper. When I was having trouble with my printer, I ended up resolving it by cleaning the print heads again. When I first set the printer up and I did a test print, it printed fine. And then I started trying to print those really vibrant um, hand-painted papers that I recently did. That's going to be a, another kit I want to get in my Etsy shop. But I scanned all those in and they would not print anything close to the color, the brightness or anything. Well, turns out I needed to just clean my print head. So I did that. But in the meantime, I had went on all these forums and watched videos trying to figure out if anyone else had the same problem and what could fix it. And one of the gals recommended a specific paper. So she swears by this. And so I bought it and I bought the double-sided. It comes in single-sided and double-sided. So this is the single-sided. The double-sided says double-sided right under here. Otherwise, it looks exactly the same. So in order to print double-sided, you need the double-sided paper because this is kind of a heavyweight. It's called a heavyweight non-glare cardstock. Now, for printing everyday things, this was a little heavy for what some of the times that I want depending on what I want to use it for. This was a little heavy. Some things, it is going to be good. So I, I did try it. It printed out better. And this was before I cleaned the print, print heads again, or the nozzles. It printed out better, but still not great. But now, uh, so I wanted to do this test print and it printed out great. So that's just another option for paper. I'll put the link down below. But if you want something really high quality, then th th that is a good paper because you can see the difference. Just the black itself is is so much darker and cleaner and it's just crisper. All the colors, if you look at um, kind of these really kind of show up, the colors are brighter and um, even like the pixels in them, it's just, it's just a cleaner, sharper. So, you know, you can get different quality um, on your digitals depending on what kind of paper you use. Again, for most things, the Hammer Mill 32 is good, 32 pound is good, but for definitely for certain things, covers and something like that, or something that's really going to be a focal point, and you're really going to see it, then um, this heavier cardstock is nice. So that's my Etsy listing. I will put it down below also, and I can't wait to get to making some projects with these. I'm going to do that, and then I'll put some videos up when I have them ready. In the meantime, I've been working on feathers. Hopefully, I'll have one on that soon. I still want to get back to my Wings with Things journal, and lots of things in the works. Getting those bright color last painted papers I did into some kind of um, digital kit also. So I've been busy, and... I am going to get back to work. So you have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.